Thank you for coming. Again, my name is Bruce Matson. I'm a teacher here. I'm also the administrator. And this is my first year here. So this event is awesome to me to get to know the history too. That's really important, not only to me, but I think for our kids too, to know where we come from and, and where we're heading, and so they can build and, and create a new history from today. The real reason I made it is for you right there. I mean, this is the long version if you have to sprint to the bathroom and stop stairs. <laughs> but I, I, I made this long version with some archaeological material on native indigenous mining, and then a forest geographer talking about trees that are growing on somewhere between four and seven feet of concrete. And trees are growing up. Looking down from the stars of the northern sky as the course of human events unfolds below, individuals die, even communities die. In the end, all that is left are the memories. Yeah, this used to be uh, like a, a pretty busy place. Like I said, my dad told me there was 26, 28 trains a day came into Wainona. I put a sign down where it says Winona. I had an unofficial tabulation of the population 19. That attracts a lot of attention. People who lived here to think what it's gone down to from when they were here, which is quite a drop from probably near a thousand at one time. A typical mining ghost town is what it is. The school, it remains today hanging on by a thread. It is authorized to teach seven grades, but it has only four to six students, none of whom live in Winona. Attention to individual students allows it to teach at a remarkably high standard. Today, all of the mining buildings and most of the homes have vanished within the encroaching forest only a few foundations are visible. Only a few people remain. At one time I used to think it would be more glamorous to live somewhere else, but you know, where there was a bigger population. But uh, as I gotten older, there ain't nothing better than this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>